Thank you for coming to this session. I'm delighted to be joined by uh, Sarah Mayle, who is the um, Head of Brand Marketing at HSBC, and Mike Watson, who's Creative Director at Wonderman Thompson. Uh, Mike and Sarah have been working together on various campaigns for about four years, including um, We're Not an Island, which some of you in the audience uh, may have seen. But today, we're going to be talking about a Vicious Circle campaign, which is about homelessness and um, banking because homeless people need banking as well. So before we dive into the nitty gritty details, I think we have a case study video to show you, to set the scene. just need some sound on the case study. This is a better film with sound, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> Otherwise, gonna, I'm going to have to narrate it, and that's really some, not going to some shallow well. puppets. <laughs> right. We could give it a go, or interpretive dance. It's totally up to you, but how's you dancing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> okay. I might need a and I think the case study with sound is now... Ready, is that or not? Okay, well, we can, we can ask, a, we can describe some of the context and then we'll go into the case study, I think, so we don't waste any, any time. Um, so, Mike, Sarah, could you describe a bit about the context around the Vicious Circle campaign and the idea behind it, how it started? Yeah, so we're here today to talk about um, the HSBC homeless uh, account is the short term word for it. So as a business, uh, a few years ago, one of our employees in Liverpool um, was walking past uh, lots of homeless people. It was increasing on it seemingly on a daily basis. So she decided to try and do something about that. And we have a big thing internally where if you see a problem, you can try and solve it. Um, so we created an account where if you are a person who has no home and you don't have a bank account, you can go to a charity with a caseworker and they will effectively be the, uh, your address. So, and I've had a thumbs up, so I think we're good for a case study, hopefully with sound. Okay, I think the case study video is now ready. Thanks for that intro. Perfect. I had no fixed address, I had no bank account, I had no cash, I had no home, I had no nothing, 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 nothing. I was worthless in society. Everybody has a bank account. Like everybody has a bank, you know, children can have a bank account. Was a big part of it. What was the aim and the strategy behind it? 
I mean, the, the key thing there is you've got to remember when that we've been doing this for four years, mm -hmm. um, and this was in the, the sort of middle of lockdown. So what we did with that was we worked out you know, where the, the sort of best places to put this would be. And it, we looked at footfall data um, and also areas which were sort of impacted by homelessness the most. So people walking past, you know, was aimed twofold. Was that people who needed the service and people who were in a position to help. Um, and we thought out of home would be probably the best thing, using those shelters. And you saw in there there was a, it was a person you know, made to look like they were lying in the bus shelter. That's one part of homelessness. It's a very small part. Most homelessness is hidden. It's called sofa surfing. It sounds cooler than it is. It's not. Um, it's when you basically have no home and you're just bouncing between friends. So we're, we're educating people about you know, the differences in homelessness. But using out of home is, is one thing. You can imagine that then being taken as a picture on social, for instance. That helps spread that as well. So it was getting the message out there, but doing it in such a way that would get attention and then spread. So it's an education piece, but also encouraging people to donate, letting people know that the service was available. So there was lots of different messages, but all for yeah. that kind of common good. Oh, totally. I mean, the, the donation thing there, we just we tried it out. You know, we, we brought QR codes back again. And yeah, it, it seemed to, to work. We got one, as you saw, one in five people who scanned that became a long-term donor. It wasn't the key message there. The message was, yeah, the homelessness is, is here and yeah, we have a service to help. Yeah, I think working with Shelter, they've educated us a lot on homelessness. So we, I'm not the expert on homelessness. They are. Uh, but we really wanted to work with them on what is the big problem. And the sofa serving is huge. And it is a, it's a problem that we need to address. So that's hopefully we kind of did the, the two um, executions, one around that, and then one about the most obvious uh, visible part of homelessness of the people in the street. Mm -hmm. and, and this uh, launched in 2019 initially, right? Uh, how has it evolved over time? I mean, in 2019, we, we chatted to Shelter, and they gave us these really hard-hitting stats. And um, the thing immediately that jumped up to us was, you know, homelessness is closer to home. And we used a hyper-localised campaign. We just used the stats that said, like, one in 75 people in London is homeless. And then you went to Hackney, and it was like, one in 35 people in Hackney is homeless. And we did that across a few cities, did that in a few boroughs, um, and we... We weren't allowed to put it in certain places Not because actually. the mayoral election was on and he didn't want to look too bad, so we had to fight for that. But, but obviously was, we don't talk about that. <laughs> we don't talk about it, but, <laughs> but it was about bringing those stats to life and just showing how, how much homelessness there is um, in London and, and the sort of main cities around the country. And then the, the sort of bus shelter work was, as we mentioned, educating people about sofa surfing but also rough sleepers. And then we had one last year which was we called the Vicious Circle, and most people, when they think of homelessness, they think, you know, people sleeping rough, and their main thing is, oh, it'll never happen to me, I would go and get a job, you know, I'd get two jobs. It's not that easy. When you fall out of the financial system, it's really hard to get back, especially if you can't prove who you are. So the third one, which I think we have a film to, to show, was just purely educating people that it's harder than you think, um, and then demonstrating how HSBC has the, and Shelter has the solution to help people get out of that. Yeah, I think uh, we do have an example of one of the TV ads from the Vicious Circle campaign that we want to show. If we can cue that up. No home. No address. No address. No bank account. No bank account. No job. No job. No home. No home. No address. No address. No bank account. No bank account. No job. No job. No home. No home. No address. No address. No bank account. No bank account. No job. No job. No home. We're working with charities like Shelter to provide a bank account for people who are homeless. Search HSBC UK, no fixed address. I think just that really highlights and this, the situation that people are in. And I think that one of the things I'm, I'm most proud about is changing perceptions of individuals who think, oh, they're on the street, what's wrong with them, why don't they do... It, it just completely puts a different light on things. 
And as, as a bank who can make a difference, we've taken this account. It, it has helped um, thousands of people now. We have hundreds of charities that have come on board. So it's not just shelter, it's smaller charities as well who know their local region. And we've, we have this service. It's not just for homelessness, pe for people, victims of homelessness, victims of domestic violence and uh, people trafficking and all sorts, uh, refugees as well. So we've taken this idea to really cr break into the system, really, so we can really help those in need. Because as Mike says, once you're off the financial system, life becomes very, very difficult. Um, we just wanted to try and address that. Uh, obviously, there have been very real benefits for real people. And I think there are thousands of people have accessed this no fixed address banking service now. Um, but for HSBC, in part of how did it tie in with your brand strategy or what kind of brand uplifts did you see as part of the campaign? So we're about opening up a world of opportunity. And we are very well known as being an international bank. You might have realised that. Um, I think here, this is a great proof of what, why we're here for the UK and how we're opening up opportunity, whether you've got nothing or if you've got more than not. So we now do it across the board. Um, again, it's part of our purpose is just really focusing on that. And as, an inter as a UK bank, because we're, we're a UK ring fence bank as part of this big international bank, we just, the teams are so passionate. We, we have a group of people whose sole job it is, is to basically help people on the financial system. And it goes beyond that as well, because, you know, we've got a, a potential economic crisis coming along, you know, rising costs and, and as we're all very aware of um, so it goes from if you've got nothing or if you just day to day there's just education financial education is so important and we do it for kids all the way up to adults as well mm -hmm. so it's just part of our core purpose of being here great so i might open up uh, to the floor for audience questions if anyone has a question uh, there's a roaming mic uh, okay i think we've got one here and one at the back um Hi, I'm Rob from Jellyfish. My um, question is, you created a category, theoretically. Are you still, the, do you still um, have the majority share of that category? Was it a catalyst for other banks to follow suit and provide no address accounts, etc.? We're leading the way, um, but we encourage other banks to do the same thing. So the team that I referred to, they, they will help anybody, I think. So other banks are starting to do it now, um, but yeah. yeah. The, the more the merrier. So. Yeah, absolutely. Okay, I think we had a question at the back. All right, Andrew from Red Mill Solutions. I'm just interested as to what came first. Was it the product or the campaign? And how did those two the develop together? Yeah, it was, it was definitely the product. I think that's, that's the real nice thing about it. It's not a, it's not a marketing gimmick you know, to win awards. You know, we, we're really proud of it. It came out of the bank and it was a, it was a trial in one branch. And the thing with you know, financial institutions and massive corporations is that trials are really easy to kill, right? You try something. So when we saw this, we were like, this is amazing. How can we amplify it? And it's, as I say, it's taken four years. It's really brave to do because you know, opening up a bank account to homeless people opens up a chance of fraud. There's all of these things. So there's been a lot of like mulling through it, but you know, yeah, it's, it was, it's taken a while to get there. I think getting the camp first campaign out was really difficult because there's a lot of, oh, is it too soon? But what... What I found is it created such pride inside the organisation. It created a snowball effect, so it's grown more and more. But absolutely, this was a, a team first internally to solve a problem. We spotted it and thought, this is incredible. And everything we've done has just made it grow even bigger. So, um, yeah, it's, a, it's, very, it's something that internally that everybody feels very, very proud about. Any other questions? Oh, I've got a couple. Um, not sure where our mic has gone. Oh, there, you it just wanna, oh, there it is. Okay. Uh, it's Matt from TSB. Quick question, working for a bank, how did you set it internally? Because it must have been a logical nightmare for the product team. Uh, we left them to it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> I got out of their way. Uh, and, but then, it, as I say, getting the first campaign out took uh, quite some convincing. Uh, and we started small. It was yeah. just in the main cities where we actually had the full service running. Um, and once... As I say, it's just that once you get a bunch of people who feel passionately and then they see pride in what they're doing, what they're doing got elevated, it's pretty hard to stop it. But there is a culture internally where if you see a problem and you want to try and fix it, well, they'll, they'll kind of let you explore that as far as you can. Not everything gets through, but um, yeah, it's, it, it was not an easy sell, but the results have shown that it's a good thing to do. Thank you.
So we had one more question, which is probably our last question of the session. Hi, um, Griff from Kaspersky. Um, traditionally, financial services don't do too well in trust, um, but clearly with this campaign, as a direct result of as a good success rate, clearly. Did it have any other sort of knock-on effects, and did you see maybe different customers coming to you or switching to you that you wouldn't ordinarily expect as a direct consequence of this campaign? I think the key thing is we're so famous for being international. I think more people were surprised that we would do something so local and so granular for the UK. And that's something that we feel really passionate about. We are here for the UK. Um, so I think it was more of a bit of a, oh, it's an international bank doing something. Because we are a UK ring fence bank as well as the international. So it was more uh, reappraisal. I think that's all we have time for today. So I just wanted to thank Mike and Sarah for their time and thank you all for coming to the session. I'm sure, I'm sure if you have any questions, you can find them networking.